Chapter 9, Dikes, Ditches and Earthworks The modern word dike or dike most likely derives from the Dutch word dike, with the construction of dikes in the Netherlands well attested as early as the 12th century. The 126 kilometers, 78 miles, long Westfries Omring Dijk was completed by 1250 and was formed by connecting existing older dikes. The Roman chronicler Tacitus even mentions that the rebellious Batavi pierced dikes to flood their land and to protect their retreat, AD 70. The word dike originally indicated both the trench and the bank. If you study archaeology at university or even on an ordnance survey map at length, you will notice strange earthworks on the sides of hills of Britain, with no rational explanation to why they are there and for what reason. At university, these features are mostly ignored, or an excuse is made for their construction. The reality is that these features do not make any sense unless there are other factors in operation, which have been ignored. The first thing to notice is that the word dike is associated with water. It does seem strange you would call an earthwork on top of a hill a dike, unless there was some history passed down through the years to its real use. If we look at the most famous dike in Britain offer, we notice that it is attributed to a Saxon king and therefore could not be prehistoric. Or is this a clear indication of how archaeologists find excuses for these features rather than true empirical evidence? Offer's Dyke, Welsh, Cloth Offer, is a massive linear earthwork, roughly following the current border between England and Wales. In places, it is up to 65 feet, 19.8 meters, wide, including its flanking ditch, and 8 feet, 2.4 meters, in height. In the 8th century it formed some kind of delineation between the Anglian Kingdom of Mercia and the Welsh Kingdom of Powys. At face value, this explanation seems to answer all the questions about this dike, except the water connection. But if you delve further down to look at the evidence such as findings from the dike and any written history you get a different version, for the Roman historian Eutropius in his book, Historiae Romanae Breviarium, written around 369 AD, mentions the Wall of Severus, a structure built by Septimius Severus who was Roman emperor between 193 AD and 211 AD, quote, he had his most recent war in Britain, and to fortify the conquered provinces with all security, he built a wall for 133 miles from sea to sea. He died at York, a reasonably old man, in the 16th year and third month of his reign. End quote. We all know that there is not a 133-mile wall that divides England and Wales like Hadrian's Wall, all we have is Offa's Dyke which its bank could be construed as a wall with ditch. So, the Romans built the dike 700 years before Offa, or did they? For we are now finding Neolithic flints and pottery inside the ditches of these dikes. So how did they get there? As we have shown on our case study on Old Sarum, the Romans are famous for taking existing features, such as ditches and adding a defensive bank for their own use as did the Normans who followed them so time later in history. Offa's dike has nothing to do with Offa, but this archaeological reality or misinterpretation is the key to why our history is not as we perceive. But that is not enough to prove the higher groundwater levels in prehistory contributed to these strange earthworks, so let's look at some in our study area where we have looked at the archaeological excavation records and constructed detailed river maps of Wiltshire in both the Mesolithic and Neolithic periods of history, to see how this... You have been watching a small part of the prehistoric Britain DVD documentary called The Stonehenge Enigma. The full three-hour DVD is available on Amazon as well as all three trilogy books.